Huge movie fanatic Nate stopping on by, coming at you in the first of the <laughs> first in a series of videos with uncombed hair. I talked about this weeks, months ago, that it might be fun to just not even bother combing my hair to do these videos, and I just haven't been able to do it. But now that we're in November and it's freaking freezing and life's you know horrible in Minnesota and I'm depressed, I'm going to start the series of uh, uncombed hair, and I think it'll be fun to see the different variations my uh, my hair can naturally assume, you know, just from sleeping or, or lazing around the house or this kind of stuff. Uh, so I think moving forward for a while, we're just going to have, uh, as, a, as an added bonus to the channel, we're going to have messed up, non-combed hair, and in a lot of cases, it, it, it'll be interesting to see what the hell happens with it, but uh, that's just a little bit of info that I wanted to start the video with, but the main topic of this video, obviously, is something that Admittedly, I'm a little late to the game on. I just realized I just came across this news today. I think it's like at least two weeks old news. I think it's somewhere around two weeks old news at this point. About I learned this from the Friday the 13th franchise.com website. Basically, I think a while back, if whether it was weeks or months ago, the 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 you know it seemed like never ending Friday the thirteenth rights issue lawsuit between Sean S. Cunningham and Victor Miller it seemed to go on I think they say it was only three years but it seemed like four or five or six but this this never ending lawsuit I guess this year I think finally was you know finished or whatever and I think Victor Miller won so basically what's you know and there was news weeks ago or months ago about you know expect the possibility of you know either Friday you know some kind of new Friday the 13th project well basically news has materialized at uh, what of one of the very first possible projects is going to be and it's going to be a uh, and I, honestly I don't hate this idea I, I like this idea more than a, any new movies because if if a, if a new Friday the 13th film is going to be anything like the 2009 one or worse and most likely would be worse being shot digitally and having all kinds of ugly girl characters with mullets and other things that I can't even comment on with you know keep the video up I just as soon have no more movies so honestly the 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 idea which I'll, I haven't even said yet which you probably know if you've read the title of the video is that basically at this point they want to do and a lot of places are doing this you know Ash Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell and Evil Dead did it and with an Evil Dead series which again I think is better than a simply just Evil Dead 4 because they were able to do so many more countless hours of Ash Deadite Mayhem by doing a TV series so basically the the plan at this point is to do a basically a Crystal Lake TV series produced exclusively well I don't know if it's going to be exclusively I kind of hope it will come out on on Blu-ray at some point, but it may not, exclusively for Peacock, the streaming site, uh, of which, coincidentally, I am currently a, a member. I signed up, uh, I think, in October at the $2 a month uh, special thing, $2 a month uh, price for, for 12 months. I'll probably stay signed up for the whole 12 month because $2 a month is chicken feed these days. Reading from Friday the 13th Franchise.com, this is uh, an excerpt from Variety. Exact plot details are being kept under wraps, although it is described as an expanded prequel. The show will be written by Brian Fuller, who was also the showrunner and an executive producer. Victor Miller, who penned the original film in the franchise, will also executive produce along with Mark Toberhoff, Rob Bar Sam Hain. <laughs> And A24. A24 will also serve as the studio behind the series. And then the webmaster of Friday the 13th franchise.com continues. It has been confirmed that elements from outside of the original Friday the 13th films can be used to craft the story of the new show, Crystal Lake. This is extremely exciting for all Friday the 13th fans as expanding the story of Pamela and Jason Voorhees has long been desired by a large section of the fan base. And if this series is successful, we can hope to see new films on the horizon. In fact, we are told that this is just the tip of the iceberg and a number of projects are upcoming for Jason and Friday the 13th. There's also a quote from Brian Fuller here when asked 
what can be used and even touched upon and the possibility of future films, Fuller says, everything, we can use everything. We can go to hell, we can go to space. That's not to say we will do those things, although if we do go ten seasons, I will be lobbying hard to go to space, har, har, har. A24 and Mark Toberoff, who is Victor Miller's lawyer, have beautifully and excruciatingly assembled all of the Friday the 13th rights as a streaming series. We have the rights to do everything underneath the Friday the 13th umbrella. The movie rights are a completely different thing. They are tied up at New Line and are super, super messy and probably won't be untangled anytime soon. But as far as us chickens in the television industry, uh, roost. We have access to anything and everything that Friday the 13th has done up until this point. So, let's face it, I don't have a whole lot of hope for this show. I have watched a few of the episodes of season one of the Chucky TV series, and I can only imagine, you know, there's elements that I can't even discuss on here if I want to keep the, uh, the video to remain up, which is the whole point of doing a video. I can only imagine what the hell kind of uh, side little details or kind of characters we would have in a Crystal Lake series. I guess the one possibility, though, is if, if, if they're doing it like that takes place in the 70s or if it jumps around from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, obviously there are certain trends going on now with the youth that are much more prevalent than they were back in those those eras or those decades. So if they were, if they if they do a period series, one could only assume that they really couldn't do a lot of the social trends that are kind of going on now, if you know what I mean. So if they're doing a period series, maybe there's some hope for some elements, some of the more disturbing modern day societal social elements. You know, there's some hope of those elements possibly not making it into this series, although one can say that, you know, those elements have <laughs> always kind of existed, but uh, to lesser degrees in those other decades. But, uh, yeah, honestly, I, I, at this point, I really don't even want any more films. And the, the fact that the, the film's rights are tied up even more than just the ongoing lawsuit was already is, is actually really satisfying to hear. Uh, I don't really even want any more films if they're going to be, as I said, like the 09 movie, or they most likely be, or, you know, they most likely be worse. Th this is, uh, you know, as a, as a huge Friday the 13th fan of basically the first seven films, I don't have a whole lot of hope for this. I'm, I'm interested, and, um, you know, I'll definitely check it out, and, you know, you can be sure that I'll be stopping on by to say my thoughts about it, should this thing actual actually materialize and happen. That's another thing. You know, the last time we've actually had something Friday the 13th greenlit was way back in whenever the hell it was, 2016, 2017, I can't remember when they actually were going to start production on a new movie. And because I guess at the time of the, the, the horrible performance of the Ring movie, the third Ring film or something like that, they all of a sudden just pulled, you know, just canceled the project on the Friday the 13th film. So just because they're talking about doing this, doesn't even mean it's going to happen. The fact that it's a TV show, probably, you know, and it, because everything is, is just going more and more to streaming, I'd say there's more of a chance of this actually happening and being, you know, actually coming to fruition than the, the movie. But it's still not even necessarily going to happen for sure. But I'd say more or less it's probably going to happen. So it'll definitely be interesting to see. Um, what the hell route, they, you know, they take and will it be, you know, take place in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s? Will they jump around? You know, will it somehow be a prequel or the, the, the story of, of Jason and, and Pamela Voorhees and somehow take place in current day? I mean, that, that, that just would be, you know, blasphemous. I mean, if they're doing the Jason Voorhees, Pamela, Pamela Voorhees story, I mean, it's got to take place, you know, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s you know, early 80s after Pamela's demise or into the 80s of Jason. The, the thing that I think was really exciting about the prospect of a TV show called Crystal Lake is the show is not called Camp Crystal Lake. It's called Crystal Lake, which would mean that it can be a, a show that's, that surrounds the whole, the, the whole, you know, area, the whole town. 
the whole the whole town of Crystal Lake, and it, you know, not just you know, if it was called Camp Crystal Lake, you'd be a little more expected to just dick around at, at Camp Crystal Lake. But the fact that it's simply called Crystal Lake means you've got this whole town that you can work within and stuff. So that idea is is actually kind of exciting. And if I were the you know, and if I was behind this series, I'd probably try to make it some way where it'd be just jumping all over the place from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, and all over. So every time there's a new episode, you don't know exactly, you know, what era the episode's going to take place in, maybe even time shifts within an episode. So you can just have these interwaving, you know, stories that have take place in different decades and stuff like that. There's, a, there's a endless possibilities of this series simply called Crystal Lake. Honestly, it is kind of exciting the more I think about it, but I don't have a whole lot of hope for basically, you know, modern current day movie or television producers. So as a huge Friday the 13th fan, obviously I'm interested. Obviously I'll check it out if it comes to fruition. It'd be interesting to know if this is, if this thing's going to materialize and, and be viewable within, you know, sometime next year. Will it, will it be... You know, will they start airing episodes sometime in 2023? It'd be nice if they, you know, they'd start doing it while I'm still on the $2 tier at Peacock or whatever. But I guess that pretty much does it for my thoughts on the series Crystal Lake. And I do like that title, Crystal Lake, as much as I like the title Camp Crystal Lake. I think the simply calling it Crystal Lake makes sense because, as I said, you're not... Uh, you know, you just relegated to the camp itself, but anything that takes place within the, the town and general vicinity of, of the town Crystal Lake. So, very cool. I mean, obviously, if I was a, you know, a producer or a writer on this series, obviously I'd try to weave in things like, you know, there was, there was so many, you know, details in the first film that uh, the truck driver guy talked about, and, you know, the fires and the water was bad, and... Uh, Pamela Voorhees's, you know, history with this with Steve Christie and his family and stuff. I I totally have Steve Christie. I totally have, you know, the, the the Christie family as a part of this movie. How did, you know, Steve Christie, you know, freaking end up with the camp? And I mean, I just I have all of these details. I mean, for so many years, every time I watch the first part of the first film, and you know, you see hear all that backstory that the the truck driver guy tells to Annie, you're just like, God, you know, as, as much as like prequels are kind of lame, it would be kind of cool to have either a movie or a television show to, to explore some of that stuff just just for fun. So I guess that pretty much does it for my thoughts on this series. As always, feel free to let me know in the comments what you think about this series. You have pretty much kind of like I do, absolutely no hope for it. Um, I don't have absolutely no hope for it. There, there's some hope for it. You know, I'd say like you know, maybe 30% hope for it, and the other percent is no hope for it. it. If they do it right, which is unlikely, it could be interesting. And I think the biggest thing that has to happen is this, this series has to be period. You know, it has to either take place in the 50s, 60s, 70s, or the 80s, or all above. I think the best thing that this series could do is, is be a mishmash of all those decades, flip-flopping from different... Um, times in Pamela Voorhees and Jason Voorhees' life, you know, before the drowning, after the drowning, before her death, after her death. That way we could get, you know, since they've got access to basically anything and everything Friday the 13th, we've got to see, you know, young Jason, we've got to, you know, pre-death, young Jason post-death, we've got to see young, you know, Pamela, older Pamela pre-death. Obviously we don't really see Pamela after her death, but Obviously, you know, it's, it's a, you know, goes without saying that we have to see Jason roaming around the woods with the hockey mask. I mean, obviously, that's why you'd have to have the series also take place in the 80s. Obviously, for this, you know, Friday the 13th Part 2 fans, you'd have to have a bunch of episodes and a bunch of, you know, episodes with him running around with the potato sack on his head and building his little shack in the woods. So, I mean, there's like endless amount of things that you could do so I guess I pretty much said my piece on it as I was trying to say earlier feel free to let me know in the comments what you think about this project you hope it actually comes to you know ends, ends up happening and, and you know being realized or do you hope this falls apart 
any um, and all comments are welcome that uh, I should say that have to do with the topic of this video and uh, I guess that pretty much does it for this video I hope you enjoyed the video thanks a lot for watching and hope you enjoyed the hair because I think moving forward for possibly the whole entire winter or maybe even just moving forward in general I just might st I just might not even bother combing my hair anymore and I think that it actually be, might be kind of fun and, and maybe bring in a few new uh, subscribers to the channel as well and uh, yeah I just this time of year or, it's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's like hard enough to actually s turn on the camera and sit down in front of it, let alone freaking comb your hair, you know. So I think it'll be kind of fun to uh, see how wild and wacky my hair can get just uncombed and as, as it comes au naturel. So thank you very much for watching, and as always, we'll catch you on the next video.